today, Garden Heights is reeling after the shooting of a 17-year-old black teenager by a white police officer. We live in a complicated world. It doesn't seem that complicated to me. Violence, brutality. It's the same story, just a different name. When I attack with impact, it's real tactful. The black cat waited and sat, debated to... It's best if she don't talk to father. With a passion, while seeking... She's threatening her. The only true power is the power within the people. It's about more than just color. It's about black people, poor people, everybody at the bottom. to be here kind of excited yesterday was pretty emotional watching the film I'm sure you all were pretty emotional watching it as well yeah <laughs> so tell me you know as young actors when did you first fall in love with acting uh -huh. and how did that prepare you for this role well um, well I'll start I started off as a dancer and <laughs> uh, I so I would dance so I guess performance was just kind of like in my blood and I went to an art school which then I was introduced to acting and I fell in love with it and um, yeah that was kind of the start of my acting career. He can dance, like, oh my he can God. dance. <laughs> we found out last night. Yeah. <laughs> oh. You get some yeah. at the oh. after party? I, I did, I did this. So, you know, <laughs> a one, two, a one, two, yeah. I did, yeah. I wish you would have started a film. What about you all? Um, I, was a, I started with music as a singer and musician, and then I didn't ever know what acting was until I Honestly, I think I was watching The Wizard of Oz, which is really strange. Um, but it was the first movie that was in color, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Um, and it was some, I was so young when I saw that, and I was just like, I don't know what that is, but I want to try it. Mm. And then my first role was on Law and & Order, and I was like, I thought I was going to do the comedy. And I was like, <laughs> like this like, little kid in this Definitely. really serious episode. And I, was, yeah. I fell in love with it after that. Mm. Yeah. Nice, nice. KJ, did you have a different experience coming from New Zealand, right? Yep. I started on a soap opera in New Zealand when I was 16, and that kind of just... Um, started the wave, I guess. I'm just kind of riding the wave. And how yeah. did how did you all feel about like approaching this film? Was there something in particular that made you want to be a part of it? I mean, it's definitely very relevant for the political climate that we're going through. Yeah. As young yeah. actors, are you aware of that? Is it oh, this film has purpose, and this is why I want to do it, or is it just like it's another gig? Yeah, well, Absolutely. for me, I. We said before, I wrote a one-woman show, and it's about the destruction of black identity in America. Mm -hmm. And it deals with police brutality, because I've experienced that a lot in my neighborhood. I'm from Brooklyn, East New York. Hey, I'm from the Bronx. Hey, hey. 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 um, And actually, Eric Gardner was a part of my family. Mm -hmm. And so you never think that something like that could hit so close to home, and then one day you wake up and it's on the news. Wow. And uh, I wrote Subverted. I did Subverted three days before that happened, and they were supposed to come to see it. So it just, uh, it really told me that I, that my purpose was uh, bigger than what I thought. And then um, now I'm here do, doing this movie, you know, mm. the first of its kind. So I feel very fortunate and mm. feel like it's a part of whatever my mission is supposed to be here. I think the yeah. biggest, like, gift that you get as an actor is to be able to tell a story like this. Because yeah. a lot of it, I don't, I don't know if you guys agree, but a lot of acting sometimes is out of your control. Like the parts that you get and the parts that, you know, sometimes it's it's a lot of choices and decisions. Um, and I think this all like walked into our lives at a time where unfortunately it's still really relevant. Um, but it was a story that like every single person involved in this film wanted to tell this story. Yeah. Absolutely. And what I love about it, you bring up Eric Garner. Um, there's a, several teachers, actually, who have campaigns to raise money so that they could screen the Hate You Give to right. their students. Mm -hmm. And coincidentally, not coincidentally, but a lot of the screenings are in cities and locations where a lot of like unarmed black men were killed. And it's really powerful. So it's, it's a very important film. Very important. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. for having me. You guys have fun at TIFF. Yeah. Yes. Try to have yeah. some thank fun you. and enjoy <laughs> this so moment.